Hello, my name is Chris and today I'm going to review the 2019 Toyota Corolla Hatchback, a car that has been met with universal acclaim by YouTubers who like its nice lines, manual transmission and much improved driving dynamics over the sedan. I found this car very good but different than what we expect from small Toyotas, more on that later. In base trim, Corolla Hatchback comes with 8 inch display, Entune audio that works with Apple CarPlay only. I did not use the Entune features. Toyota Safety Sense 2.0 comes with pre-collision system with pedestrian and bicycle assist, auto high beam, lane departure warning, road edge detection and dynamic cruise. Base model gets CVT and lane trace assist which can anticipate road markers if a car in front of you blocks the view. The SE adds leather steering, heated front seats and mags. The SE upgrade, this particular car, comes with blind spot monitoring, heated steering wheel and 18 inch mags with wheel braking 40 ratio tires. Finally, the XSE, which goes for $29,000 Canadian, adds leatherette seating, extra in-tune accident aid fluff, 8-way power seat and dual zone automatic climate control. Take a look for yourself. The trunk is small, however the hatchback makes it decidedly convenient when the seats are folded down. Rear seat room is limited, this car feels like a compact and the rear seat is hard to get into. In front it is a better story. The leather steering wheel is ace, perfect grips at 10 and 2, wonderful. The infotainment is located high up and does not distract the driver too much. The quality of the materials are decent enough and the build quality is incredible, rivaling the kings of interior craftsmanship, Volkswagen. I did not hear a crack or a rattle. Great job Toyota. The seats are a disaster and they seem to have been designed by the F-Sport division of Lexus. 30 minutes and my back had had enough. The fun factor of this car was intense, which, driving manual in the city, was peppy and zippy around corners, a real fun to drive. This combined with Toyota's legendary reliability makes it unrivaled really. On the highway, the lack of a turbo was noticeable, but it got around in good time. A real pivot for the Toyota brand, I think this is the first car that a 20 year old can drive and not feel out of place. The shifter is a delight to use, though it is available in CVT with a mechanical first speed so to speak to avoid the rubber band effect of acceleration from takeoff. The four cylinder has a D4S direct injection and port injection system which avoids the carbon buildup issues on the intake valves that direct fuel injection only systems have and takes regular gas. The propulsion system is obviously bulletproof. The Corolla hatchback does 8.4 liters in the city and 6.3 liters on the highway with the manual transmission and a jaw dropping 7.5 liters in the city and 5.8 on the highway with that incredible CVT. Very good engineering and this engine produces 168 horsepower and 151 pounds of torque. Although Ross and I really liked this hatchback, I think we both liked CHR a bit more. However, here are my brief thoughts on the road. Hello car lovers! Driving the 2019 Toyota Corolla hatchback today. Pretty awesome. Ross brings me this car. Um, what to say about this car? Well, I think the exterior styling is really nice. It's the most beautiful compact Toyota ever. Period. Period. Um, and the Toyota Corolla sedan was not too shabby. The trunk room is a bit lacking uh, for uh, this kind of hatchback car. Um, I don't think, like I didn't take the measurements, but it feels like probably one of the smallest in the category. Um, the rear seats too, I have come to the conclusion after having tried this car and the CHR that Toyota in the smaller vehicles just doesn't care about the rear passengers. They just don't. Like, it, it, and that's fine because I don't put anyone back there. So other notes about this interior, well, the 
exterior road noise on the highway is reasonable, I'd say. They did a good enough job on the insulation. It compares well with its competitors. You're not in a Honda Accord, but still very good. Uh, on the highway, passing power, you may be a little bit less than some of its turbocharged competitors. Remember, we always pay five to 10% more for Toyotas because of their long-term reliability, which their competitors simply don't have. And I would even put Honda in that category. They're no longer uh, top-notch reliability like they used to be. They're still very good, but not as, not as certainly not as good as this gold standard here. Um, so there's that five to 10% that you pay more. And this would explain why you don't have a turbocharger. Uh, I think a turbocharger is a much more complex engine. This naturally aspirated engine Toyota knows the inning, they know the score, and I'm sure that decision was based on having it last forever. Um, this car comes with a six-speed manual, pretty good manual, I'd say. It's got a nice long shifter, it holds well in hand, um, nice short shift. Well, they're not that short, but I mean, they're notchy. I, I think it's very good. More interesting, I think, is the CVT. This new CVT has kind of like this idea of having a mechanical low gear, and to help it like get it get it going to avoid the elastic effect of a CVT and once that low gear has run out it goes into regular CVT mode and you kind of get the most best of both worlds so I certainly I think I would recommend I haven't tried it but I think I would recommend this the CVT just for the better fuel economy um, what else about this interior well the head unit is okay it's nice and high so it doesn't take your eyes too much off the road uh, it does have hard buttons um, I think it's easy enough to consult I love this big fat steering wheel really nice I have to reproach the seats a little bit I think they got the designers from the F sport seats of Lexus um, I, I do feel pressure here on the sides the leg bolsters here are a little bit intense um, like I'm not sure over an hour how that's gonna feel and I understand the temptation of car manufacturers to to please the 25 and under crowd but those people don't buy new cars and uh, I just think well if the Honda Civic hatchback can have comfortable seats maybe the Toyota Corolla can also I know I'm being hard but that's just what it is that we're reviewing the cars another thing that I've noticed over the last two three years and Ross remarked it also with the uh, CHR that we reviewed recently is just the level of build quality of Toyota. I hear no rattles. It feels so solidly put together. In fact, in the non-premium brands, they are out Volkswagening Volkswagen uh, in terms of just that solid feel. I don't know. I, I don't know what it's going to be like long term, but I just feel like in five years this car is still going to be solid, and that's really nice. That's a really good feeling of quality that you will not necessarily feel in the showroom. You feel that all on the road driving it, especially here in Lachine with our shitty roads. So is this vehicle recommendable? I think for the purchase it is highly recommendable. The beautiful styling, the reliability, the fuel economy, that cool CVT that they just came out with, and I think reasonable amounts of room in front. Although it does feel confined, I think it's because of the height that, it make, that, that I feel this way. But now that I'm sitting in it for a while, it feels that there's a lot of room here. There's not that much room in the back, but some of its competitors don't have much room either. I mean, it's not, for me, it's not a deal breaker. The hatchback doesn't have a lot of room, but still, uh, when you lower the seats, you can carry big items, which is the convenience of a hatchback. Um, very highly recommendable, and that's also because of the, mostly because of the, the, the long-term reliability. Toyota is just in another league. Uh, for the lease, I, I still think it's recommendable, though um, Ross makes the remark, and I've made that remark often in videos, that Toyotas, you really should be buying them. And that is the review, guys. By the way, if you like this video, like it. If you don't like it, don't like it. And if you really like it, you should subscribe. Duh. And that is it.